Hey, this is Charlie, and this is my Raspberry Pi gamepad controller video. I've had this project kind of on the back burner for a while. I built the Pi three, four years ago, I think when version 2.5 was out, and then version 3 came out, so I bought that. Uh, now version 4 is out, and I haven't bought that. I may wait till version 5, or, or we'll see. This is a Raspberry Pi, um, you can see right there. 3 model B version 2 I guess uh, it's got a heat sink this is this is the Canera kit it comes with this cool little case and you can hook up controllers to it like a USB gamepad but you can also do uh, arcade buttons and an arcade joystick and, and all that stuff and that's my my goal um, is to make a arcade cabinet um, so, so to speak. The, the original intent was to build a, a giant cabinet to look like an arcade machine, have it pushed against the wall, and you could stand and, and play, or you could sit on a stool and play. But I, I started thinking about it, and that's a, a lot of material, and it's kind of a, a permanent fixture. You need to know exactly where you want it. If you ever want to play it elsewhere, you can't really take it with you. Um, so I changed my design quite a bit from what I originally planned to do. And I decided to make kind of a, a big game pad um, that is portable. I could take this somewhere if I wanted. And I wanna have the ability to plug controllers into it if I don't wanna use the arcade buttons. And I wanna be able to kind of have that arcade feel. Uh, so once I make this game pad, um, I'd be able to set it on a tabletop, tabletop or, or my lap or sit in a recliner with it across the armrest, um, any, any, anything I want, anywhere I want with it. Um, but I'm also going to build some kind of thing on the wall that's just a little extension that I could put the, the gamepad on the wall if I wanted. And then if I have a TV up there, it would kind of feel uh, like an arcade style cabinet. You'd be standing in front of it or sitting in front of it. Um, so that's why I, I came up with this design. Uh, a long time ago, when I was just, it was probably three years ago since I started this, and that's how, that's how long it's taken me to get back to it. Um, but a long time ago, uh, when I first did it, I made a template, and it was a rough template. It was supposed to be a temporary thing uh, where I drilled out the, the buttons and the, the holes for the joystick just for proof of concept. I got everything wired up made sure that it worked and that's kind of as far as I, I got to it. Um, just like every year I pretty much have the entire month of December off because I'm awful at using paid time off throughout the year and it's use it or lose it so pretty much the entire month of December off again. Um, so plenty of time and I'm circling back to this now. Uh, and this board that was temporary that I did a, a rough job on drilling out the buttons and uh, routering out a spot for the the joysticks I've decided to make permanent or at least kind of a, a beta version um, if you will the, the price of lumber right now is pretty crazy just uh, a 1 by 12 8 foot long board of this uh, finished pine this isn't even finished you can see there's a knot right here but the the good kind without the knots is 40 some odd dollars so I'd have probably a hundred dollars worth of lumber if I was to go buy uh, new top grade stuff. Um, but I had this laying around. I've cut the boards carefully so I can remove as many knots as possible. And I, I think this, this will, will work fine. Uh, so let's talk about the design. Um, I mentioned I'd routered this out, a uh, real rough job because it was supposed to be temporary. Um, and originally I screwed these uh, joysticks in from the bottom and the screws went into this wood and this wood was sitting for two or three years and it, it warped a little so I had to send it through the planer and when I sent it through the planer you can see that the screw holes became exposed. Um, just taking a, a little material off that was enough to see the, the screw holes. So that'll, that'll get filled in but I wanted to change the design because there's not a lot of meat here to to be screwing this gamepad that you may be frantically moving around. Uh, so I made these little brackets and they screw in like here and then this will get 
mounted uh, in the middle and there, there's some wiggle room um, to move it around so I can make sure that everything is, is centered. And these joy pads, uh, I think they're, yeah, they say Sanwa, and these are upgraded. There's like an octagon um, ring there. I got everything from uh, focusattack.com, and I think they said these are the official joy pads that they use for Street Fighter. So I figured if that's what they use for all the Street Fighter tournaments, those will be plenty good enough for me. Um, so those are the joy pads. That's how I'm going to mount them. These are the the buttons, and these are, the, are they maps or paps? What are these? Ha haps, H-A-P-P. -P. These are hat buttons, and they have many different styles. You can get a convex or concave uh, button head. You can get them uh, a little shorter than this, or these long ones. I think I bought the long ones because I didn't really know uh, what material, material I'd be putting them through. Uh, you can also get the cool little two-player, one-player um, buttons as well. And when you drill the holes, you'll, you'll probably want the exact size drill bit. I didn't have the exact size drill bit, so there's some play uh, for mine, but they'll get clamped down tight and this little lip will hide it. But when you, when you design your controller, what I'm doing, I needed to make sure that uh, this bottom layer is going to fit over that. And then when you actually put this, the switch on, it makes it even taller, so you, so you have to compensate uh, for that as well. So the next thing that I had to figure out um, is where I was going to mount the Raspberry Pi. Um, there's kind of two things that I need to mount. One is the controller for all the buttons and switches, and that's over here as well. Uh, you can see it right here. It's a control block, and it says retroblock.com. It's, it's been a few years since, since I bought that. Maybe there's a newer, better model out um, by now. But you can see that has a ribbon cable on it. And that ribbon cable uh, connects to the pie, there's like a pin header right here. And I thought maybe I'll put the pie in the box. How's that gonna be for heat or cooling or if I need to get to it? Um, how am I gonna plug in controllers to it? If I have this mounted in, in the box, how am I gonna plug a USB controller into it? And, and I couldn't really find a good solution for that. I figured someone must sell these little extension cables and I could have like a nice face plate on the side for for USB and HDMI and the power cable, um, but I couldn't find anything, uh, honestly. I, I did find some USB stuff, but it was it was just USB, and then I read some reviews about controllers not working really well when you plug into them. Um, I didn't want to have that that problem, so I decided to, to mount the, the Pi outside the box. And then I got to thinking, should I mount it on the top? Everything would be easy to get to, but it be a little bit of an eyesore. And that's when I decided to, to go this route. And I've got everything clamped together um, and the glue's drying right now. But this pie is gonna be in this Raspberry Pi case probably without the, the top on it. Um, so it'll look just like that. That'll, that'll get mounted and it'll come through here and you can see these pins. I've cut that slot in there so that the ribbon cable can go through so it can go to that control block. And then this is gonna sit exactly like this. So you'll see that the USB and ethernet um, will point out this way and the HDMI and power will point out that way. Uh, that way, if I come in here with a USB cable or the, the power cable, I'll be able to get to it. It's right, right inside that V. Um, and it'll also be hidden, because when this is flipped upside down, um, this wood will be over it. You won't even know that uh, the pie is in there. It'll be easily accessible if I did need to move it. I don't think it's gonna fall out or anything, because the ribbon cable goes through here, but I'll probably put a piece of, of Velcro on it, so if, it'll be nice and, and secure if you're carrying this around. Um, but if I tipped it, it's not, it's not gonna fall out, and it wouldn't be it wouldn't be permanent, it wouldn't be screwed down anywhere where I couldn't remove it 
um, without taking a bunch of stuff apart if I, if I wanted to. So that's where I'm at right now. There's still quite a bit of, of work to do to it. Uh, once this glue dries, um, I've got to focus on these, these buttons. So you can see they're really close to the edge. I'm not going to be able to put the, the locking collar around the buttons. Uh, so those things that stick through, there's this collar um, and it threads onto it and it tightens down and that's, that's what clamps the buttons. Uh, and there's, there's not enough room here. Hindsight, if I actually bought new wood, I'd, I'd lower the buttons or change the design where I wouldn't have to worry about it. But since I'm trying to repurpose uh, this, original, um, this original board that I use, uh, I'm gonna have to, to notch out here or, or grind that out just to give me some room for the collar. Uh, so I gotta do that. Then I've gotta make a board for the back and I don't have a, a very wide piece of, of pine to use. Um, so I've decided that I'm gonna do it in three pieces. There'll be kind of one piece here, there'll be one piece here, and there'll be a big, the, the widest board I got in the middle. Um, these top and bottom will be permanent. Uh, but the middle one will just be screwed on, so if I do need to remove it to get to the wiring or anything, um, I'll be able to. Then once that's done, I've got to fill in all these holes. So these were uh, countersunk, and then I've got a special bit that'll create um, the round plugs, so it's the same material, and I'll glue and hammer those in, saw them off, and then I'll sand everything down, and, and I'll give it uh, a nice coat of stain. I'll probably take the router to all of the, the corners too, just to put a, a nice bevel on it so you don't kind of cut yourself or it doesn't have a sharp edge that's easy to ding. Um, and that's, that's it for now. Uh, I'll get the other video spliced into this one, hopefully sometime uh, ne next week. So this is part two of my Raspberry Pi arcade controller. Everything is finished. I did some testing on it last night and it works well. In the first video where I left off, everything was still kind of rough. All the edges needed to be planed and sanded. All the screw holes needed to be filled. It didn't have varnish on it, obviously. Uh, I didn't end up taking a router to the edges like I said I was going to. Some of the plug holes are kind of close and I was worried the router may want to blow the side out. So I hand sanded all of the corners to make them smooth. For the varnish, I did one coat of this mini wax IP switch pine 221. And then I did three coats of this clear gloss. And this is just stuff that I had left over from a poker table that I made several years ago. So I thought, why not reuse it? For the Raspberry Pi, it fits in there just like I expected. I can get to the USB connectors. I can get to the power and the HDMI. I've got some Velcro on this side and that seems to keep it secure. It, it can move around, but it's not gonna fall out or anything. Um, if I added a piece to the bottom, it would definitely help, but there's all these holes in the bottom of this case and I don't wanna uh, restrict airflow or anything through there. So I'm gonna leave it just like that. The ribbon cable goes through that opening just like it should. And then that goes to the control block. And I've got that mounted uh, using these little red spacers. And those are nothing special. Uh, it's just one of these red wire crimps, or, or two of them rather. And I cut them in half, and that's what I use for the legs. And I just put a screw through the center of them. And I tried to keep the wiring as clean as possible. This is all from Focus Attack. They sell all this wire. This ground wire is just a daisy chain pigtail. It comes just like that. And then all of the colored wires are also three to four foot pigtails. So it's literally plug and play. You snap everything together, run the wire where you need it to, cut it to length, and then you can just use these little screws to, to clamp everything in. For the joy pads, those are screwed in and I also added some wood glue around all the edges that I could fit my hot glue gun in uh, to make it even more secure. 
So you may have noticed with the Pi that there's this USB thing sticking out, and that's actually a Wi-Fi adapter. And this isn't the original Pi that I showed you. Uh, this is a version 2.5 Pi, it's my old one. And this is the version three that I intended to use. Uh, but after I had everything set up on this and I went to test all of the, the controls, nothing was working. And probably half a day of troubleshooting to realize that this GPIO header, some of the pins uh, don't work properly. So this is defective and I had to resort to my old uh, 2.5 Pi. And I don't think I'll get another version three to replace it. I think if I'm gonna replace this, I'll just pay a little extra and go with the version four Pi. Uh, so what would I do differently if I was to do it again? Obviously, uh, nicer quality wood, some of the stuff without any knots would be better, but I was trying to do this on a budget. This is all kind of repurposed wood that I had laying around. Even the varnish that I used was from an old project. Um, so the quality of, quality of the material. Uh, for the joypad mounts, these screws that hold it in, they're only going into about half an inch of material and you have to be careful with the length of screws you choose because you don't want them to get so close to the edge that they, they split apart the top or the, the end pokes through. Um, I'd probably glue on some wood blocks to this underside just to bring it out more so that these screws would have more material to bite into. Uh, every, everything feels solid now, just the, the engineer in me likes to over-engineer everything. As far as the, the layout, um, I think that if I was to do it again, I'd put these buttons even closer together. I don't know if people like to use these two fingers or if they use these two, but I'd, I'd make them closer together and I'd probably have them more oriented this way because your hand naturally wants to come in at an angle and this feels more natural than it does doing this. Uh, but this could be version one. I may make another one in the future, who knows. Uh, I may have some overlays made in vinyl too, just so it can label the buttons and could even hide these screw holes if I had a, a big overlay that said up, down, left, right. And then I have some rubber feet that are coming that I'll screw one into each corner just to keep this from scratching any tabletop or, or vice versa from scratching the underside. Uh, of this. So that's it for now. Overall, I'm, I'm very happy with it. It seems to work well. Uh, in the description, I'm going to put a link to all the, the buttons and controls that I used, as well as the website where I bought that control block in case anyone else wants to, to try doing this.